What is up? Coming to you live from the cat house in Montebello, California. This is Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast, the Monday edition, the August 24th edition, the H24 Kobe Bryant Day. Now, this apparently is going to be Kobe Bryant Day from here henceforward, since both of his numbers were 8 and 24. Uh, and no, this is not the ASMR version of the podcast today. I have to keep a little calmer today because our son is asleep in his crib. And um, I'm a very loud individual. So I have to not be as boisterous as I normally am oh for the show. Uh, or, well, oh, <laughs> as the wife, or my wife will murder me. No, or, no, no. My son will wake up, or our son, our son will wake up, and that's, we don't want that. We want our son, we've been getting him to fall asleep earlier and earlier now, and we're getting more sleep. That's why my eyes don't look like they're coming out of my head anymore. And I don't think the audio is being picked up at all. Why is the audio not being picked up? It's barely being picked up. This is really weird and unusual. I feel like I'm going to have to hold the microphone next to my mouth because I'm not speaking in my normal podcast voice. I'm going to really have to dial up the gain on this when uh, we get it up and running. This is incredibly annoying. So what's up? So this past weekend, uh, I guess the, the biggest thing that happened this past weekend, there's nobody watching live. I am sorry, everyone, that I was so late. We, uh, for, for our live audience, I am 24 minutes late. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we were finishing bathing the child and putting him to bed. So this past weekend, because there was not a real comic con, uh, DC decided to hold their own event called DC Fandom, or Fandom, or I don't know what the point of calling it Fandom or Fandom was. They did a big digital event where they showed a lot of trailers, and they showed a lot for trailers for video games, and trailers for movies, and trailers for information for TV shows. And as uh, our good friend of the show and a uh, uh, previous podcast co-host, Pete Molini, uh, told me they didn't really announce anything in regards to comic books. Uh, they announced very, very little in regards to the actual physical comic books. Uh, they, they, they did announce that Milestone Comics, something that happened when I was a very young man. I, I remember when Milestone Comics was a thing. That was a, uh, a very, uh, that was the time to do black comics. They were very black, it was black focused comics. Dwayne McDuffie was the spearhead of that back in the, in the, in the early 90s. I remember those. I, I had copies of a, of, uh, I believe it was Syndicate and Hardware. And they're very interesting. I, I actually really like the art style, especially Hardware. It was very gritty. It was very different from a lot of the other stuff in the early 90s. But unfortunately, uh, it did not sell very well. So, of course, uh, DC naturally got rid of most of it. I believe Static got to stick around. Static Shock got his own animated show. But that was, the, the I guess, the pinnacle of success in regards to Milestone Comics, but there was not much else in regards to comic books that were announced. And this DC fandom, fandom that, that happened this past weekend, what did get announced was uh, they announced a couple of video games, for those of you who love video games. They announced the, uh, the a Suicide Squad Let's Kill Justice League game brought to you by Rock City Studios. If you don't know who Rock City Studios is, uh, that is the studio that brought you all those amazing Batman Arkham games. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, and Batman Arkham Knight. Not uh, Arkham Origins. That was somebody else that did that game. <laughs> I forget which studio did that, but that was definitely not uh, Rock City Studios. Uh, that brought us those, those, those sublime uh, experiences on the PlayStation and on the Xbox. But uh, that group, they're, they're making a Suicide Squad game where I guess you get to play as the bad guys and you get to try to kill Superman and kill Batman and kill Wonder Woman and all the rest of the Justice League. And another game that got announced, which uh, I, I did get to see the trailer for that, uh, uh, was uh, Batman Gotham Knights, where I guess it's it's a game where Batman dies. It's a, it, it presupposes a, a different reality where Batman has died and his four previous sidekicks, uh, Nightwing, uh, and 
I, well, it's all three uh, Robins. Nightwing, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake, the current Robin, and then Red Hood, and, and Batgirl, Barbara Gordon. All four of them are tasked with the, the job of protecting Gotham City with the death of Bath Batman. <laughs> I almost said Bathman. <laughs> Batman has passed away. And I, I didn't get to see what the play style is. Uh, it, 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 this one is not being made by Rock City. It's by uh, Warner Brothers Montreal. And uh, it, everything I've read so far, I, I, I can't be 100% certain until I see the actual gameplay. It's supposed to be another... Uh, uh, everything I've read so far says it's a live service game. So something along the lines of uh, Destiny or any other uh, game that's like that Anthem. I'm trying to think what else of those live service games that have survived the, the live service surge of 2015 but there were games that would be updated or the division there you go that's another one so i don't know if it's something with a mission-based structure you pick one of the four four characters and go play uh, very akin to that avengers game that everyone was playing this past weekend in the free uh open beta that was happening on playstation but those two games look cool, and then they, they released a whole bunch of movie trailers. Uh, we got to see the entire Suicide Squad team the, from the, the James Gunn uh, Suicide Squad movie that's coming out, and that actually looks really cool, if, I, if I'm going to be honest. It looks pretty amazing. The, 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 the cast that James Gunn has put together is quite hilarious. <laughs> the, the number of, uh, uh, of B and C list dil uh, villains... My, my words are being lost right now. I'm trying to be so focused on not being loud. It, it, it's very unsettling. Uh, I'm sure it's weird having this little red dot here on the, on the video. Having this red dot right here. I'm, I'm holding the microphone real close to my mouth because I am not projecting like I normally do. Uh, that, uh, I think the, the of all the people in the trail, like, I, I was quite surprised at Idris Elba. He, he, I, I believe he's gonna be Bloodsport. And if you're familiar with the old Superman comics, uh, you're like, wow, really? And uh, an, a, another one that, that really, I laughed out loud when I saw it, was good old former WWE wrestler John Cena is going to be in this movie. And he's going to be playing a character called the Peacemaker. And I think uh, as uh, Pete Molini was commenting on, on the internet, it was really great because a lot of these costumes are comic accurate. And... Uh, that is not that is both a compliment and an insult at the same time <laughs> uh, There's often times where people get, get complain about oh well, the, 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 the the costumes in the movies are not comic accurate that it, If you try to do some of these costumes accurately in movies, they're gonna look ridiculous and uh, John Cena wearing the peacemaker helmet and the red and blue outfit that the peacemaker wears <laughs> I mean it looks fine in print, but it's comedic, and I think uh, James Gunn was is really steering into this because it uh, actually I'm such a professional. I unplugged the microphone. I am such a pro. Uh, if you see the trailer where they show the cast, they they literally have the 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 actors side by side with uh actual drawings of the characters that they are portraying and that is just awesome i don't know if this is a movie trailer that's like for the mainstream or this was a movie trailer that was really directed at the old comic book nerd like myself that just this movie is going to be ridiculous and fun and um i don't know what's well, supposed to come out in 2021 i don't know if we'll have movie theaters back by then but maybe it'll pop up on hbo max who knows? Um, it'll probably be video on demand. I don't know if they're going to do the crazy thing that Disney's going to try to do with Mulan, and I'm sure they're going to do with Black Widow down the line. But the, the, this uh, Suicide Squad movie trailer was amazing. This made me... I, they just showed the character. I think there was another trailer where they... they it was a little more in-depth. I didn't I didn't get to watch that one. Being a parent, very busy. I, whatever little, little free moments I had sitting on the toilet... <laughs> That's where I got to watch a lot of this DC fandom stuff. Uh, but that, that, that Suicide Squad trailer made me laugh out loud. I'm like, nope, I'm in. I'm in. This, this movie looks like it's going to be a uh, hundred times better than the previous Suicide Squad movie. Uh, just The cast alone 
just you know, go go check it out. I mean, you, you may not recognize some of the names, but you, when you see some of the people, you're like, oh, okay, I know that. That's the dude from Deadpool. Oh, okay, no, I know that guy. That's the weird guy from Pitch Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's that weird person from that weird movie who was really funny. Okay, I get it. This is going to be hilarious. Because <laughs> if James Gunn can pull it off with the Guardians of the Galaxy, he's totally going to just stick the landing with all this wild stuff he's doing with the, the Suicide Squad. I, I'm, I'm incredibly excited. This is the first time I've been super excited for a DC movie in a very long time. Uh, another uh, trailer that was dropped was uh, the Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, they, they put out a, a longer trailer, or a, a new trailer, where we actually got to see uh, Kristen Wiig fully formed as the cheetah, and that looked really cool. That that trailer w w looked like it, that, that is going to be a lot of fun. You have a lot of the uh, the 80s tropes uh, being done in that movie. I think that the end of the trailer where, where Steve Trevor is like, is this what you wear? And then... Wonder Woman just putting him in all kinds of weird eighties getups, and I was like, "Yep, they're 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 starting." <laughs> Paul, Cheetah looks atrocious. I mean, it, it it's certainly a look. <laughs> they, they they showed her. I I was just like, "That's a it, it, that's certainly a, a a move they went with." Uh, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the still images I've seen have not looked good. Like in motion, it looked okay, but. Yeah, the a couple of the still images I saw of her in, in full cheetah regalia. Yeah, same CGI as cats. You know what? That's not out of the realm of possibility. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the the same CGI team. Like we're gonna redeem ourselves. We're gonna get a uh, we're we're gonna get this right with this cheetah. And then whoops. <laughs> but uh, all the all the eight. I I I'm totally there for eighties humor. I I I I vaguely remember most of the eighties being a child. Uh, they only showed her in dark lighting, so which means the CGI probably wasn't done. <laughs> the the CGI on on Wonder Woman's uh, winged winged cape was was, was most, mostly complete, but uh, the rest of it, yeah, I guess you can take it or leave it. But yeah, that that trailer looked like it's gonna be you know more of the the more of what the previous movie had, but instead of being during World War One, it's gonna be set in the eighties. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of. Uh, it's gonna be the most. Uh, most uh, Marvel is Marvel esque of all the DC movies. Did, did I hear about the butthole cut of cats? No, I have. <laughs> uh, I think that would be the version of cats I would want to watch because I feel that'd be very accurate with the, the way that our cats show us their buttholes all the time. That 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 that'd be the the, the best version of cats because everything I've heard about that movie has been bad. Or uh, uh, for, former podcast guest and my former roommate Trent Trail is. He, he loves incredibly bad movies. Oh boy, YouTube trailer. Oh man, that 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 sounds like a a, a fun time. Did this thing stop recording? <laughs> oh, my audacity to stop recording. I can put this down. I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to steal the audio from Facebook later. <laughs> it's just one of those days with the with the audio today. Oh man. Uh, fun times for everyone, but uh, the, the, but the, the the third and I guess arguably the biggest trailer that came out of uh, this past weekend was the Batman, and that's another trailer. I feel like it was very polarizing because I think I saw just as many people who loved it and hated it. It was very equal on both sides. I have, uh, I have friends on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, in regards to that film because it looked like it was. People were just either thought, okay, he's the coolest Batman ever, or this is going to be the worst Batman movie. Um, I, I, I sat and watched the trailer. Uh, Pete, Pete sent it to me, and I watched it, and all I can, all I can say is I don't know. I, I feel like I, I can't fall in either camp of worst Batman or best Batman, because I'm not sure, because... That there were things that concerned me about the trailer, but then there were also things that intrigued me about the trailer. Um, I was like, oh, okay. It, it, it seems like they're going to focus more on the detective. I mean, when they showed just Batman in the room with the, the GCPD, and I was like, oh. No, see, I, I didn't see Colin Farrell in the trailer, but I found out after the fact 
uh, when I when I saw uh, one of my Facebook friends complaining about why are you hiring such a famous actor when you're just gonna cover his entire face in prosthetics and make him unrecognizable? Because uh, I guess you're, <laughs> yeah. See, oh yeah, right. I loved it, but DC has a uh, has a has a talent for awesome trailers that somehow misrepresent the final product. That this has been proven several times. That many of the trailers have been really cool. I, even the first Suicide Squad movie had a really cool trailer that was done up like a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer with classic rock and funny quips. So uh, I'm not sure. Like, I, 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 I'm not going to pass judgment on this Batman movie like so many people. Um, yeah, example, Suicide Squad. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm not going to pass judgment on this movie. I'm not going to declare it a failure like many of uh, us. <laughs> yeah, it's Suicide Squad, the first one. Suicide Squad. It's just bad. Just, I, I saw it in theaters once, and I'm glad I only paid $5 to watch it. I refuse to buy that movie. But, yeah, um, it, 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 there, there is... I, I feel there is hope in this movie, but they could go spiraling out of control. I mean, if they manage to, if it manages to be right where Aquaman and Shazam work, because Shazam, entertaining, Aquaman, I was entertained, as long as it's entertaining. I, I'm not looking for a, a piece of high art. I mean, because the, the Chris Nolan movies were, you know, very artistic. They were really good. They're well representative of, of their genre, but they were, also took themselves incredibly seriously. Um... I, I haven't seen anything. I, I honestly, I kind of with, with everything that Scott or Regan Snyder has been saying in regards to his cut, I am getting less and less interested in watching it. Um, I'm sure for the sake of the podcast, I'm gonna probably attempt to watch the Justice League Snyder cut. But he keeps saying things that make me not want to watch it. Uh, he he keeps like. Uh, talking about how like all the thing, you know, how everything that was wrong with that Justice League movie. I'm mean, yeah, you know what that Justice League movie was a weird hodgepodge of two movies. Like we like we discussed here a couple of years ago. You know, um, I, I don't enjoy the these the Snyder DC movies. I mean his well correction. I enjoyed Watchmen, but that was him just following the plot of Watchmen with his crazy need to do make everything extreme and dark and gritty, which works for Watchmen. Man of Steel. See, I see Rolando Morales watching, the, probably one of the biggest Superman fans I know. That dark and gritty, that's not Superman. Superman, it's funny because over and over they, see, they keep saying that the S stands for hope, but there wasn't a lot of hope in that Man of Steel movie. And then don't don't get me started. Yeah, I said, yeah. Watchmen was one of the best comic book films because he followed it along. He followed what Alan Moore wrote almost to a T, except with a. Of course, they changed the ending, but that's beside the point. I I, I weirdly made peace with that ending change because it's like I they had to make it more consumable for a general audience because they. they your comic book nerds like totally go, oh yeah, the alien coming in and blowing things up. Oh, and then you know, blaming Doctor Manhattan and using that as a cover. That was actually very inspired. A uh, little change to the original Watchmen book. I, I thought that was very clever in a nice, uh, seamless way. Yeah, it made yeah exactly. It made sense for film. because yeah, you you only have two hours. You don't have the uh, an episodic thing. Like I, I still haven't finished the um, the Watchmen show because that was right around the time when. We were having the kid, so <laughs> it's been a. Uh, as Paul, I'm sure you know, the, the, trying to be a nerd around a baby is, is, is very difficult. Yeah. See, HBO made it work. I see, yeah, that's the thing. I, I'm sure the squid, yeah, squid would have been too much for a two hour movie, but for a long narrative, that made a lot more I'm sure it would, it would have made a lot more sense for a long episodic thing. So, yeah, he can make a good movie. Uh, I, there was a Dawn of the Dead. I thought that movie was a lot of fun. I can rewatch that movie. I can watch Big Rains with a shotgun, be a smart ass, and kill a bunch of people all day long. But when you start messing with Superman and kind of making him a weirdo and 
a weird sociopath, that's where you, you, you lose me and obviously you lose a lot of people. You take a movie like Batman Superman, which should have made a billion dollars. You, you put the two biggest icons in comic books. Sorry, Spider-Man. Uh, Superman and Batman, those are like iconic characters. They're like, they're like the Mickey Mouse of comic books. You go around the world. You show someone a Superman S, or you show Superman, the, the Batman logo. Everyone around the world knows who they are, hands down. In more recent history, you know, Iron Man and Cap and Thor, because of the movies, have become bigger than they were 10, 15 years ago. But you're talking about Batman and Superman, globally known. And you put out that movie, it should have made over a billion easy if it was entertaining and fun, but that movie was just such a, it's such a bummer of a movie. It's just, it's depressing. Uh, there's people who enjoy it, and you know what? I, I I will never take that away from people who enjoy it. But your average person is gonna watch that movie and be like, whoa, that was really weird and really like dark and unusual. I mean, there again, there's there's parts that are good. There's there's good. There's, he doesn't. It's it's not like he's making a piece of trash, but it's just there's so much more potential. So, of course, we go forward, Batman, Superman, that movie was what it was, and then we go to that Justice League film, which was half Joss Whedon, half him, because he unfortunately had to leave the movie before they went into post-production, because, you know, he lost a kid. I'm a dad now. That, that makes even more sense to me now than when I was talking about it two years ago. God, that was like two and a half years ago. That was during the, the, the first year of the podcast when we were in a fancy radio studio doing this show uh, and I definitely did not have the depth of being a dad at that point and so he had to walk away from the movie and then Joss Whedon was hired after he was unceremoniously uh, kicked out of Marvel and uh, he tried to complete it and turn it into more of an Avengers-esque movie with which a lot more brighter colors and less grays and uh, we got what resulted that an unusual Justice League movie which also should have been a movie that made crazy Marvel money. It, it, I think that's the big disappointment with a lot of the DC movies, where like if you make something that people can, that are entertained, I mean, I'm not gonna say Aquaman's a great piece of cinema, but you know what, that was an entertaining movie, and it made a billion dollars, coasting on the, the charisma of uh, Jason Momoa. <laughs> it's like you, you put a freaking, it's like you put something entertaining around Jason Momoa, and look at that. You can make a billion dollars with Aquaman, but you drop the ball so hard with Superman and Batman that it doesn't make sense. We're like, yeah, that movie made $600 million worldwide. Like, what did you do wrong? <laughs> and yeah, I, obviously, <laughs> something went wrong. But now, to circle this back to why this is uh, relevant, uh, every interview that Snyder has done uh, in regards to this Justice League cut, he's been uh, bashing uh, everything about the, the the Whedon revisions of Justice League. I guess trying to like and say, oh, like mine would be superior, mine would have my my vision would have been better, and so it makes me think like, yeah, this is, I don't know how entertaining his version of the Justice League is, and it's just the uh, I think it's just. Warner Brothers and now parent company AT&T trying to alright we have all this footage there's a lot of hype behind it let's see if we can sell some HBO Max subscriptions for a little while and maybe a bunch of these people won't forget to cancel their subscription after one week or one month and we'll rake in some money to make up for the however many millions they're pouring into finishing the Zack Snyder cut that the internet has been clamoring a very vocal minority internet has been clamoring for that's i think that that's i feel i know he talked about it some more he talked about oh i hate this line i hate that and, uh, and i guess they did some sort of panel where they curated all the questions so they, they, they teed him up a bunch of softballs that's that's the only thing i've read about the the snyder panel during dc fandom where they just it was just a bunch of uh a bunch of softballs for him to knock out of the park they, they, they curated the questions. It, it, it wasn't like a regular Comic-Con experience where a few assholes get in there and ask something stupid. <laughs> or they try to challenge the, 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 the director. So that, that, that's all the, all the big stuff that came out this past weekend from DC Fandome. 
or as a Pete replied, the the, the 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 abandoning of comic shops. That that's that's what how uh, from the perspective of a comic shop owner, that's what DC is doing. I, I, I'm assuming it's a lot of what's coming from uh, from AT and T because uh, after the, the 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 most recent merger. Uh, they, there's a lot of cuts that happened at DC Entertainment. They got rid of the the big merchandising arm of DC uh, DC Direct, where they that's where they created a lot of the cool uh, merchandise you see out there. Uh, that's gone now. I guess they're just gonna license out all their awesome characters to other people to create instead of creating the products themselves. I'm sure uh, logistically and financially that probably makes more sense for them just to collect money and let someone else make it, but. DC directly the, the DC direct stuff was really awesome and uh, I guess I, I'm just biased I, I want to see quality product not crap product come out from like these properties because as much as you know I, I sit here I, I for years and talk about oh how awesome the Marvel movies I as a comic book fan I've always been more of a DC guy <laughs> uh, but the, my the Justice League movie is such a great disappointment to me because the the Justice League comic book has always been one of my favorite comic books going back to me being as a kid. I, I spent eight years uh, from like sixth grade to middle of college collecting the, the 1990s Justice League. I'm, I was going from convention to convention, digging through uh, quarter bins and 50 cent bins, slapping together this funny, weird series of the Justice League of the, of the early 90s. And I, I slapped it all together without the internet. It was... It, that that was like a quest. I, I love I love DC Comics, and then they had their great creative renaissance in the in the mid two thousands, and then now lately, like it's it's been going off and on. Like recently, oh, it was, it was getting good again, but now apparently they're they're just se it just seems like they're 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 abandoning the comics again, the, and that that's every every uh, piece of information I get from good old Pete Molini. It, it sounds like they're just moving away from physical comics. I was explaining to my boss today at work like, uh, that comic books have long been kind of a, a, a loss leader for, you know, within Warner Brothers and then obviously Marvel at Disney. They're like, oh, they, they lose money creating the comic books nowadays, but they have to keep maintaining the comic books in order to maintain the, uh, the trademarks on all these wonderful characters that they're making money in the movie and TV and licensing and merchandising divisions. They, you have to keep, I guess, the, 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 it's, it's originally, as long as you maintain that trademark, you have to keep producing it. At least that's what that's what I've been told. I'm not a, hundred, I'm not, I'm not a trademark lawyer, and I've never sat here and claimed to be one, but that, that's, that's like, like logically, a lot of these corporations, like why, why, why do we keep making these paper things that people may or may not buy? Yeah, that's how you maintain, a, at least as far as creative stuff. I mean, I'm sure in another 20 or 30 years when Batman and Superman could potentially become public domain, we'll see how the corporations handle that. I'm sure the Warner Brothers slash AT&T of the future will not, uh, will not be happy when it's like, what do you mean Batman's become public domain? That's a, that's a discussion my boss and I were having where I was like, I, I'm sure that the trademark lawyers and the copyright lawyers are trying to figure out, let's say, so who do we have to bribe in the government to change these trademark laws so we can, and I'm, I'm sure people on the Disney side are doing the same thing. How can we keep this stuff from becoming public domain? Who knows? Let me see here. Let me go through back to my list here. So, uh, something we talked about last week. I mean, where, where is it? Let's transition to Fortnite. Oh, let, let me let me do a nice little smooth transition. So, this week it was announced that there's going to be a big Marvel event. It sounds like it's a Thor and Galactus, and they're, they're doing some crazy thing in Fortnite, which means an update is coming. So, as we talked about last week, Epic and its great battle with with Apple and slash Google as well. Uh, if that update means when, when this Marvel update happens for Fortnite, uh, all of the iOS players and all of the Google Play players will be locked out and will not be able to play Fortnite anymore. Uh, and what does that mean? It, it's You're going to see a lot of unhappy children. I, I feel like it's primarily kids who play Fortnite on, on their phones. 
I'll, I'll, I'm sure this affects people who play Fortnite on, on their Macs because that's also an iOS device or they play it on their tablet. I, I'm sure the people who care the most about playing Fortnite are playing it on their PCs through their Epic Launcher and this is not going to affect them at all and I guess they're, they're, they're having some sort of event where you can earn uh, <laughs> a, 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 an Apple head. So it looks like an evil corporate Apple head that you can earn as a costume piece. And then they're, they're playing, oh, that's the free Fortnite uh, cup or something. They're, a lot of these people are they are unaffected. All these, all these PC players and console players are unaffected by this. It's just people who play on their phones and their mobile devices who, who cannot play in this this epic battle where they're, where Epic is claiming that, uh, that oh, we're, we're defending... Uh, the gamer against the antitrust uh, that, uh, that that Apple is committing, and and apparently uh, uh, Epic has gained a, uh, an ally in this. Uh, as I was reading that, Microsoft is siding with Epic in this, citing oh, the uh, Apple is too restrictive because uh, uh, Microsoft has a lot of apps where like they, they had a new app that was supposed to come out where you can play your Xbox games on your mobile device or 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 play them anywhere. Apple did not let that, that apparently this app does not work on iOS devices so I think Microsoft is more than happy to throw their uh, I guess their moral support I don't think they're gonna be contributing financially to the the lawsuits that epic is currently embroiled with 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 Apple and and Google but uh, Microsoft uh, in, in choosing sides in this uh, battle which doesn't help anyone and Honestly, the, the, the biggest Fortnite players are completely and utterly unaffected. It's, it's just, uh, this is all posturing and insanity. Yeah, it, I guess Apple revealed that, oh, Epic let them know that they were going to violate the terms of services. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're telling you that we're going to violate the terms of services. We, we, we're planning on doing this. We're giving you a heads up. This isn't like, so it wasn't a, it shouldn't have been a surprise that they got locked out completely. Uh, it's just battle between billionaires and trillionaires, and the only ones who lose, who loses, the children are going to lose. Because I honestly, I think that's that's the biggest of, of people who were affected by this. Cell phone Fortnite players. Because I, I recall my 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 godson Noah was a frequent Fortnite cell phone player. He he was driven insane because every once he came over. Uh, to my old apartment and I wouldn't give him the Wi-Fi password because I'm like, no, you're not going to sit here and play Fortnite. You're going to hang out with your uncle and all his friends. We're all going to watch some professional wrestling. Speaking of which, apparently some uh, a, a slam of some sort of summer happened yesterday. Uh, I, I, I could not have been bothered to watch it. <laughs> I checked the results online. Uh, even though I, I applied last week to a wrestling website to be a podcaster for them. Uh, I, I couldn't be bothered to watch WWE SummerSlam. Uh, they debuted a ridiculous thing this past week called the the the, the WWE Fandome. Or no, not, no, sorry, wrong one, Fandome. I'm, I saw like the Thunderdome, where they, they installed a whole wall of LED screens where uh, select fans who were, I'm sure, very well screened. Uh, so a bunch of monitors show fan faces You'll never see it coming. That's right, Warren. <laughs> we didn't see the ending coming. A backslide into a pin in a world title match. Didn't nobody saw that coming. So there's this Thunderdome that WWE has done. They they have they have the technology. They have the logistics where they cre they created this wall of screens. That way it looks like there's fans there, but it's just a bunch of people on a very big Zoom call. The Thunderdome. And uh. Yeah, they're not making noise. It's just a bunch of people sitting there, like it's just like like just like me, or it's just like I'm, I'm gonna do my impression of a WWE fan in the Thunderdome. I know there's just nothing for people listening to the podcast, but yeah, it's just a bunch of people just watching. Uh, I guess uh, I was reading uh, tonight on Raw. I guess uh, Drew McIntyre asked all the fans, throw up a thumbs up if you're watching me on the Thunderdome. And then I guess, I don't know if they, they let up the 10-second the delay. <laughs> there has to be a delay. There, there can't not be a delay on this. 
unless the people have like signed some sort of agreement like if I show my penis on this <laughs> I will be banned apparently a, a person was banned I'm not sure if it was during Smackdown or if it was during SummerSlam someone held up a sign that said fire velveteen dream and that person was like immediately booted out of the Thunderdome. Like you've been logged out of your Thunderdome session. You need to re-register again. And I guess they've been. That person was banned for holding up a, a, a an, a sign, in contradiction to a decision that WWE has made, in regards to a person of interest. In terrible things that that person may or may not have allegedly done. It's pretty likely that he did some bad things. But I. Uh, that that that's a that's a subject for another podcast. But yeah, the the, the SummerSlam Thunderdome and yeah, this, this is just the it it I guess it's better than seeing a bunch of uh, employees of WWE standing around some hockey glass and banging on the hockey glass. But it, it looks cool. They're in an arena there. They've rented out the the Amway Arena in Orlando for the foreseeable future, and it's given them some revenue and they're just holding events in an arena uh, as opposed to doing it in their in their warehouse <laughs> they had wrestlemania in their warehouse i guess like they, they need to do this so they can have SummerSlam and, and, and not inside a warehouse with fancy led lights that fox is like we paid for this shit <laughs> who knows it's just pro wrestling is such a weird state i'm i'm, I'm I'm going to be logging into New Japan World and checking out what's going on there. Apparently, they, they've been filming stuff locally for New Japan World somewhere here. And, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually going to guess it's in Port Wainimi, <laughs> all the way out there where Championship Wrestling from Hollywood normally tapes. I guess a, a peripheral friend of the show, Dave Marquez, is, is the one who's probably running this show because it looks exactly like the, the, they're doing this a New Japan NJPW Strong show where they have all the talents that are trapped in America all together and then any other talents that they that they're hiring temporarily to fill the gap of the of some of the the live product they need to put on the, the, the NJPW world because they have all the Japanese talent in Japan and they've been doing uh, shows over there with just the Japanese talent and then they have all the American or landlocked American town who can't probably can't travel to Japan right now. And they're, they're trying to figure this out. And they have to log on and NJPW because right now I think there's a new episode of NGW, NJPW Strong that went up this past Friday, and I I, I got to catch up on those at some point. But yeah, it's a it's it's tough to be a sports fan right now of any sport or any sports entertainment. Well, it is 9 p.m. Got to go check on things over here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I have to go back and rip the audio from Facebook now and see if I can salvage this. Uh, we're here every Monday night live. Uh, on Wednesdays, we have our Dre versus. Currently, I am in a long conflict with Streets of Rage 4, but we'll be moving on to another game soon. On Friday nights, we have Dre's Retro Game Minute. Uh, I was going to attempt a new video series uh, as well called uh, Dre's Nintendo Collection or Dre's Nintendo uh, I was gonna just basically pull something out that's my uh, some of my employee only garbage and be like hey check out this employee thing that I have to see if people want to see that on YouTube or here on Facebook uh, well, I, I'm workshopping that other program because I'm just trying to create more content for both our YouTube page and our our Facebook page and our Instagram page content is king and if, I, if this thing's gonna get any bigger, I have to keep making more content at some point. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media at Dre GP Podcast. That's uh, that works on Facebook, that works on Instagram, that works on Twitter. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast. Yeah, show and tell with Dre. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Nintendo Show and Tell. Uh, one of the episodes. I don't know if it's gonna be the first episode. Uh, it's gonna be my little Mario trophy. I gotta. I gotta do a show and tell with that one. Uh, hopefully that'll get a lot of views on YouTube or something. I don't know. I gotta figure something out to try to get those numbers. Gotta get the numbers up. All my analytics. I, I'm obsessed with analytics now. So uh, all, all my Nintendo tchotchkes that I that I earned as a uh, my Nintendo suitcase that I have. Yes, I have a Nintendo suitcase. Seriously, it's a suitcase that's completely embroidered. 
a Nintendo, actually, I have several Nintendo suitcases. They gave us a piece of, play some retro game. Yeah, that, that is the, uh, that's the end game. I, 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 I'm trying to set that up at work because I, I can't do the retro games here at home. But, well, I'm, I'm trying to set that up at work so I can at least do that during my lunch and do some retro, because I have a, I clearly have a big collection of retro stuff that I can play and, and show you guys. That, that, that's, that's what I can do next. Uh, oh. Definitely. That's 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 in, that's in the pipelines. I have a TV with with retro connections. I have all my retro games and systems in my office at work. I just have to smuggle them into the conference room at work <laughs> and hook up to the to the to, to the work Wi-Fi and sneak away and and play that and and hope that my boss doesn't get too annoyed <laughs> with me doing that on. A regular basis of the Dre versus those, those Dre versus videos. I'm doing those on my lunch at work. I like, I, I, I save ten. That's that's why those the, the, those videos. I try to finish the levels in ten minutes or less because I'm like I'm using the last ten minutes of my lunch. I go I scarf down my lunch, set up the tripod, set up the switch, set up everything, and quickly try to crank out those Dre versus episodes. It, it more content. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I yeah, ideally want to play some retro games is tiger okay tiger's okay all right cool thank you for watching thank you for listening we'll see you guys yeah we'll hopefully we'll see some of you later this week watching the videos that we post up and then if you for the live watchers we'll be right back here next monday night with another live episode of dre's geek philosophy podcast thank you for watching thank you for listening we'll see you guys next time